end of the art. When the GCK began, little did we know the extent we are going to get to. But I'm telling you, the best is yet to come. So join me tonight as our pastor, our father in the Lord, the convener of the GCK, defender of the faith, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuye, to bring the word of life to every one of us again. Put your hand together as we welcome our father to the pulpit. Pastor, praise the Lord. If you are there and you are expecting that the goodness in the gospel will reach out to you tonight, everybody everywhere I said, praise the Lord. The Lord has been saving souls, restoring backsliders, doing good in every life, and healing the sick, delivering the oppressed, even raising the dead. Since we started this global crusade, the gospel, the good news, the glad tidings to every creature. And the Lord is still at work. And your life, it'll work tonight. Your family, it'll work tonight. Transformation total, complete, entire transformation because of his triumph. He'll do it in your life in Jesus' name. But I want to tell you something. That you're not just there, looking here and there. If you came for something, pay attention. And whatsoever he says unto you, do it. That's the price you pay. It's died on the cross of Calvary. It's provided everything. But you don't just fold your hand and close your mouth and close your eyes and just bend down as if rain. You are coming. Okay, I'm here. He'll tell you something. And whatsoever he tells you, don't say, there's no price to pay. There is nothing I will do. There is something you will do. And when he tells you, here is what you do. This is what you do. That price you pay. And if the Bartimaeus was called by Christ, he had a garment and was going to Christ. A price to pay. He removed that garment that will hinder him, that will stop him. He laid it down and he went to Christ whatsoever. He says unto you, do it. Look at Zacchaeus. He wanted the salvation of the Lord. Yes, Christ is Savior. He'll tell you something to do. You abandon your past life. You abandon your past evil. Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything with wrong accusation, I restore it fourfold. There is a price to pay. Look at the prodigal son. The prodigal son had been in the far country. Now he came to himself and he had a price to pay all the friends behind. All the things he had enjoyed as a prodigal runaway son, he had to abandon that. He couldn't carry all his friend along. There is a price to pay. And whatsoever he says unto you, do it. Here comes Christ. When did Lazarus die? Four days ago and is buried. Come on. Take ye away the stone. That is the price you pay. Lord is thinking by now. If you believe, you will see the resurrection power of the Lord. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. The price to pay. Christ 
will not take away the stone for you. They went and took away the stone. That, in their own case, was the price they will pay. There is a price to pay. Yes, they died for you. And you pay attention. And whatsoever he says unto you, do it. He require you. He'll tell you to take that stone upon belief away. Paul the apostle, what things were gained to me, them I count as dung. I to push aside all that position, all that possession, where the Sanhedrin, and that's how he got the salvation and the service there is a price to pay and so as you come tonight are you listening to the word of god i don't want you to just you know hang down your hands no price to pay no repentance no turning away from sin i am here lord bless me whatsoever you says unto you do it i will somebody there i will that's how we get salvation that's how we get the forgiveness of the lord that's how we get relationship with the lord he'll tell you something and then you bow and bend and you say lord thank you i will bow your head and let us pray father in the mighty name of jesus we look up to you tonight and lord we are not going to set another standard and we're not going to have our own terms but your term your condition we're going to fulfill and we're asking lord that your miracle of salvation your miracle of healing your miracle of deliverance will come to everyone willing tonight in jesus name and we pray that the power, the power of heaven, the glory of heaven, the grace of heaven will come upon every life tonight in Jesus' name. Grant us the willingness that whatsoever you say unto us, we will do, and our lives will never be the same again in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. We're still in the book of Daniel. And in Daniel chapter 8 today, I'm looking at verse 25. Daniel chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 25. And I'm reading the last line of verse 25. It says, he shall also stand against the prince of princes. He, the negative man. The son of perdition, the man of sin, he, the one representing Satan in these last days, he, the Antichrist, opposed to Christ, opposed to the salvation of man, he also shall stand against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. The devil will be broken. Satan, Lucifer, will be broken. The Antichrist, opposed to righteousness, he'll be broken. And every problem in your life, sin, sickness, satanic attack, everything broken tonight in Jesus' name. He shall be broken without hands. I come to talk to you tonight on the final triumph of the Prince of princes the final triumph of the prince of princes there are many princes on earth there are princes and principalities and power 
the princes of perdition. There is the prince of princes, our Lord Jesus Christ. And if there is prince of peace, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the eternal everlasting Father, and the prince of peace. And when the principalities and the powers, and when all the principalities and powers of darkness, when they come against the prince of peace and the prince of princes, that principality, that power will be broken in Jesus' name. I was waiting for your amen. amen. The final triumph. And today he comes because he is triumphant. The final triumph that brings transformation, that brings salvation, that brings healing, that brings deliverance, that triumph of the prince of princes. The three things we're looking at, number one, the transgressors trampled under the prince of perdition. The transgressor, the way of the transgressor is hard. The way of the hardened sinner is hard. The way of the evil doer is hard. All those transgressors, if they don't come to Christ, the only one who can deliver them, they are trampled under the prince of perdition. Number two, the total triumph of the prince of princes. The total, complete triumph of the prince of princes. That prince of, of princes is here tonight and every yoke in your life it will destroy. Every evil in your life it will cast down and throw away from your life in Jesus name. Number three is the trustworthy transformation by the prince of peace. The trustworthy transformation by the prince of peace. Look at number one. Number one we're looking at the transgressor trampled under the prince of perdition. In Daniel chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 7. Daniel chapter 8 verse 7, and I saw him come close unto the ram, and he was moved with cholera, that he is with, uh, with anger, with fury, and he was moved with a temper of uh, annoyance and he says against him and he smote the ram and break his two horns and there was no power in the ram to stand before him but he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him, trampled upon him, and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. I've been talking to you about the powers of the emperors and of the empires. We have the Babylon and we have the Middle Persian and we have the Greeks and we have the Romans. And this is selecting two of them now. It says the Ram and he's standing for the for the Grecian Empire. He had two horns and he was in his own time, it was mighty and powerful. But now the one that came after him, the one represented by iron, it says he came against him and he confronted him. He got him down, trampled upon him, and there was no one to help. It's the story of humanity that since the time of Adam and Eve, and since they ate the forbidden fruit, they, they might, you know, before the real trouble comes, it's like their power they have an ability they have and whatever they thought they had and then lucifer satan the devil comes he gains any life every life and he gets them down and then they try to fight but they cannot overcome they use all the charms they have but the charms cannot deliver them from satan and they use all the idolatry and idol worship they have and the idolatry could not deliver them they try science they try traditional they try the native strength and native power they try scientific power and no one could deliver them from the hand of that representative of Satan. 
Satan. That's what we have been. And Jesus Christ himself, he calls that Satan the prince of this world. And the whole world had been suffering under the power of that prince. But thank God, the real prince has now come. With power, with authority, with anointing that breaks every yoke out of your life. But for you to understand what this priest we're talking about, the priest of perdition, what he has done, what he's doing, what he will yet do in the far future. John chapter 14, we're looking at verse 30. John chapter 14, verse 30, hereafter, I will not talk much with you for the prince of this world cometh. The prince of this world cometh is the prince of corruption. Is the one that corrupts the lives of everyone. Is the prince of the carnal. Is the prince of the worldly. Is the prince of the rebellious, is the prince of disobedience, is the prince of the sinner, all the people that live in this world, that Lucifer, that prince, the one that controls the mind of people, and it shows people go this way, go into the tunnel, and go into darkness, and go into evil, and go into dungeon, he controls all the people of the world, the people that have not known the Lord, and Jesus said, the prince of this world cometh he comes to everyone he even dare to come to Christ and he said if you are the son of God command that these stones will become bread and Jesus said it is reaching and what is reaching for you is reaching against the devil you didn't hear that one. I said, what is written for you is written against the devil. And then he, he came again and said, all right, look at the pinnacle, get in there and jump down. Because the scripture has said, he even tried to quote scripture. Anybody can quote scripture. But he misquoted the scripture. And Jesus said, it is written again, thou shalt not test that you are not tempt the Lord thy God. Then he came again and he said only one thing more. And if you can do this, he wanted to corrupt him. The prince of power and the prince of peace. The prince that has all power on earth and in heaven. This prince of perdition wanted to corrupt the Lord. He said, bow down to me and I will give you all these things. And then again, Jesus overcame him. You will overcome. I will overcome. What I'm telling you is, is the prince of this world. Defilement is the prince of that. And all destruction is the prince of that. And premature death is the prince of that. The filthiness you find in your life, in the life of anyone, is the one in charge, is the one in control. The greed and the covetousness we find in the world, he is the prince of the world that causes all that. Uh, people, they will even take the life of another person, kill another person so that they can have his property. All that covetousness, all that greed, and all that evil, he is the prince of the world of this world and Jesus said he cometh he cometh he came and he's still coming and he comes to everyone he comes to tell you why don't you go this wrong direction why don't you go into darkness why don't you worship idol why don't you deceive your neighbor why don't you steal why don't you be disobey God and then you'll be independent and you'll be free he comes to everyone but Jesus said he has nothing in me and the Lord will so transform your life tonight change your life tonight that when that prince of perdition when he comes he will have nothing in you in Jesus name look at Ephesians chapter 2 Ephesians chapter 2 I'm reading there from verse 2 it says wherein in time past you walked according to the cause of this world according to the prince of the power of the air that's the man the man of sin the prince of the power of the air 
and all the astrology all the evil things people look at they're looking at the zodiac they're looking at the stars and they say the stars will predict the future and their life he is the prince of the power of the air other people they go to the sea they go to the bush they go to the forest he is the prince of the power of everything you find there and once you give yourself to him and you give your life to him and he says obey me you say yes sir you make him your master he'll control your life he'll control your destiny and forever you stay with him and live with him in hellfire forever and ever it says he the devil is a prince of the power of the air the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience look at verse 3 in verse 3 among whom also we all had a conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and we were by nature by nature by nature all the offsprings of adam all the descendants of adam the nature we had is the nature of that prince of the power of the air now when we say sin is I am that Satan in nature that the nature of every man Satan finds a way to put a literal injection of his own nature a literal injection of his own sinfulness a literal injection of his own rebellion and when Satan in nature comes and take over your nature then all have sinned and come short of the glory of god it says the power and the thing that now works in the children of disobedience they fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were what by nature the children of wrath even as others but well, thank god satan will lose you tonight he will not control your life anymore whatsoever he says unto you do it if you have to take up that garbage or batimios and throw it away that the price you pay and if you have to think what things were gained to me them i counted loss for christ and all the authority of the sanhedrin the position you have in religion if you have to cast that aside like saul that became paul that the price you pay and if you have to take that stone away the stone of from belief and the stone of finality that your Lazarus is dead and you, the real sin in you that is dead and you have put the final stone there and the Lord is saying take away the stone and you don't argue whatsoever he says unto you and you take away that stone of unbelief your life will come back again resurrection will come back again in your life in jesus name it might be that you have taken up the net again you knew the lord before and you forsook your net and you forsook the fish and now after some years following the lord you say i go fishing again and then you are by the seed side now and children have you any bread there and then you say no he says throw your net over there and you throw your net there and you catch a lot of fish and you begin to count 153 and now you bring everything to the shore and now you say peter simon peter son of jonas lovest thou me more than this look at your fish and look at the face of christ are you still going to follow me i want to take you on a journey and get you to the day of pentecost i want to take you on a journey and take you to the day of power i want to take you on a journey 
and you're going to have in one message in one preaching three thousand souls to be converted i want to take you on a journey i'm going to take you to the acts of the apostles your shadow will heal the sick and then you'll tell them yes take up your bed and walk you're going to reach the day you come to that docker's and you'll say docker's rise up and the power of resurrection that you have never tasted will come unto you but 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 look at your fish and look at my face there is a price to pay lovest thou me more than these and then you say yes lord and you forsake that and you come to the lord a new power a new strength a new anointing will come upon your life tonight in jesus name you're looking for wine and there's no wine the wine has finished the wine of joy in your family it's finished and the wine of a satisfaction in your life has finished and you see we have no one he says fill the water pots with water whatsoever he says unto you do it and you have to do that against yourself because yourself is scientific man an intelligent man will say we're looking for wine we're not looking for water but no argument that's the price we pay the price we pay is that we do not argue with god and we say we're looking for wine it says fill the water pots with water and it says draw out now are you not going to lay hands on the pot draw out now are you going to are you not going to say some word of command and decree on the water draw out now and that's the price you pay that your mind your intelligence will say we have to do something it has to be fermented and after the fermentation they will carry to the master of ceremony but when there's no argument and you forget yourself you forget your own thought that's the price you pay and then you carry it and you take part of that water and you take to the master of ceremony and he tasted he said what did you get this this is better than even what we started with you see you have to do something you cannot just fold your hand and close your mouth and close your eyes and say okay let the man over there pray no you have to repent and you have to obey the word of the lord and you have to say lord here am i i will do whatever you have told me to do a miracle will come to you there tonight the opening of the blind eyes will come to you there tonight and the power of the highest will come upon your life tonight in jesus name and somebody shout amen we're looking at point number two now point number two we're looking at uh, uh, total we're looking at the total triumph of the prince of princes the prince of princes we're looking again at daniel chapter 8 i'm looking at verse 25 daniel chapter 8 reading from verse 25 and through his policy also shall he cause craft to prosper in his hand that the antichrist that the prince of the world that the prince of perdition and he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace deceptive peace flattery shall he destroy many and he shall stand up against the prince of princes but he shall be broken without hand somebody say amen, amen. whatever that prince of perdition has brought into your life you might not see any sign tonight you might not see any hand tonight a hand might not be laid upon you tonight but the prince of perdition will be broken out of your life his pain will be taken away the perplexity will be taken away and all the evil that he had piled upon your head tonight everything will be taken away in jesus name but remember you must do 
as a command. If you happen to be in Zacchaeus there, in Zacchaeus there, in Zacchaeus there, and now the Savior comes, the prince of princes, he comes, and he looks up at you and he says, Zacchaeus, come down. And then you come, you have to come down. You cannot say, I'm enjoying my place on the tree here. You must do whatever he says that the price will pay. We have to do what he says. And then you come down and you say, Today I must abide in your house. And you remember all the stolen goods you have in your house. And you remember what you have stolen from other people, whatever certificate of money or land or woman or wife. You take him from them whatsoever you have taken by wrong accusation like Zacchaeus you're willing to pay the price and restore for fault salvation will come to you tonight but you know, what if I don't yeah, I don't return what if you don't return when Christ says you should return Abimelech the woman you have there is the wife of another man restore her unto the husband Abraham. If you don't know that you are a dead man already, the judgment of God will be upon you and upon your whole household. And so be really cross up early in the morning. There's a price to pay. Repentance. Restitution. And making right your life and doing what God has said and he called Abraham and he said Abraham what have we done you brought so great evil upon us I didn't know I thought you people here are wicked I didn't want you to kill me for my wife or I get your wife back and get every other thing you did he want us get everything back and Abraham prayed for him it didn't take five minutes all the deadness in the womb of the family of Abimelech everything was healed a price to pay and when you do what God has told you to do miracle will come upon your life healing will come upon your life deliverance will come upon your life in Jesus name and so we're told over here he the prince of perdition will be broken without hand. Christ is the prince. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5 and verse 31. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, verse 31. Him as God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, Christ. The one who died for you, Christ. The one who rose again, Christ, Savior and Lord. God exalted him with his right hand to be a prince and his, and his Savior for to give his the one, the prince, the eternal prince, the mighty prince, the powerful prince, and the one that no man, no woman can fight against. The prince that brings salvation. The prince that brings freedom. The prince that brings total emancipation. How God has exalted him by the right hand with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel. Israel had to repent. A nation, you have to repent. A family, you have to repent. An individual, they have to repent. That is the price you pay. He died on the cross of Calvary. And because he died for you, now you want to come to him. You want to have his forgiveness and his freedom. You want to have his salvation. You want to have the new life. You want to have the goodness of the grace of God in your life to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. You see two things there, repentance and forgiveness. Repentance comes first. You cannot just stand there and say, okay, this I should raise up my hand. I raise up my hand. You have to go beyond that. You look at your life. You look at all your sins and you want the salvation of the Lord. You say, Lord, I turn. Lord, I repent. Lord, I give up. 
my evil way. He gives repentance to every sinner. And then when that repentance is real, he gives forgiveness of sin. And he tells us in Acts chapter 3, we're looking at verse 15. Acts chapter 3, and we're looking at verse 15. It says, and then, whereof we are witnesses. Look at verse 19. Verse 19. Repent ye therefore. Repent ye therefore. Did somebody say you have nothing to do? You have something to do. Repent ye therefore. Turn away from your evil. Turn away from your sin. And come to the Lord in genuine repentance unto the Lord. Repent ye therefore and be converted be converted what does that mean yeah, you know sometimes we have you know those our printers will understand you know the off courts from the papers and they have been working with the papers and they cut everything to size and all the things that remain those papers appear useless like our lives without christ useless our lives without righteousness useless our lives without salvation useless all those of course useless but then the person, the converter, the one who can convert all those uh, scraps of paper and make them useful, they collect everything together, one piece from there, one piece from there, another piece from there, another piece from there, and they collect all those scraps of paper and they pass through a particular machine and then it comes to the other side and that is no more scrap, it's now usable, it's now sellable, it's now profitable. That's what God will do for your life tonight it will convert you i said it will convert you and then you'll see the places i used to go i go there no more the things i used to do i do them no more the dresses i used to wear i wear them no more the drinks i used to drink i drink them no more something happened conversion happened and the scraps of paper and the useless entity has now been converted and your life is going to be profitable to god profitable on earth and it will profitable until you get to heaven in jesus mighty name repent ye therefore for your own good for your own conversion and for your own salvation and for the hand of the lord to touch you repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come the times of refreshing shall come it's the time of joy it's the time of peace it's the time of freshness is the time of a new life as you repent and you call upon the lord and jesus christ becomes your savior and your lord and your life is now profitable when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the lord look at verse 26 in verse 26 unto you first god have been raised up his son jesus sent him to bless you in turning away everyone from every one of you from his iniquity now sin glues itself to us sin glues itself to our heart it's like if you don't have that thing you cannot live it's part of your life and then you come to christ you repent you say lord i don't have any power of my own to be free but i want you to set me free i give it up i give it up in my mind in my prayer in my thought in my de in my decision i give each up and then you have the grace of god to help you and what you couldn't get through and get up by yourself the lord will detach every sin from your life amen, amen. i rejoice for you i'm happy for you a new life is coming to you today a new power from heaven is coming to you today in turning away every one of you from his iniquity new life eternal life refreshing life a renewed life a transformed life 
because you open up your heart to receive the praise of princes. We we'll come to point number three here. Point number three is the trustworthy transformation by the prince of peace. The transformation, the change that comes, and it comes from heaven, and it'll change your heart as salvation. It'll turn your soul around. That's the redemption you have from the Lord. Then he will touch your body. He will change your body. And all the sicknesses there, everything will vanish away. I said all the sicknesses there, all the diseases there in your body, everything will vanish away. How does that happen? By not looking at another person, not saying, if they get it, I'll get it. That's like saying, if they breathe, I will breathe. No, we we'll breathe. The air is available. And then we we'll make the effort in, out. We we'll inhale, we we'll exhale. We're not waiting for him to breathe, for her to breathe. Before we breathe, it's a personal decision. You wake up in the morning, you need to wash, and you need to clean up yourself. If he washes, then I'll go to the bathroom, I'll wash. We don't do it like that. It's a personal decision. You're feeling pressed, and you need to release what is inside there. And you need to go to the restroom where you release all that thing. Yet I feel pressed, but let him do it first. We don't do that. If you do that, nothing will be inside. It will cause you trouble. It will cause you pain. We do what we need to do, whatever others do or don't do. You want to have Jesus as your personal savior? We're not waiting for that man. We're not waiting for that woman. We do what we need to do because we're the one asking for the peace. We're the one asking for the joy of salvation. We're the one looking for life eternal. And we do what we need to do, whether others do it or not. And then when it comes to healing, because he'll bring a change, a transformation in our body. If you are blind, you're not waiting for another blind man. What if that other blind man is not ready tonight and he doesn't want to receive the sight? You are the one that will take a personal decision. And whatsoever he says unto you, do it. If he says, lay your hand there, you lay your hands there. You're expecting that the miracle of sight will come unto you. And then we pray and that blindness is cast off. And now we say, remove your hand from there and check up yourself. You're not waiting for other people. Before you check up yourself, you have that liberty that tonight is the night of your healing it will happen in jesus name when the united states of america you know some time ago and uh, this woman a korean woman was dying in the hospital and a nigerian nurse knew that i was in town and uh, that woman, Korean woman, nothing could be done for her. And so the nurse went to the doctor and said, Doctor, uh, Pastor so and so from Nigeria is here in the United States and he prays for the sick and they are healed. And uh, the, uh, he said, uh, the woman said, I want to take this Korean woman, I want to take her to that meeting in St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, those who are old in the church in Minnesota, they are like there, they remember what I'm saying. And they put that woman on a stretcher and put her in the ambulance. And they drove to the church. And very gently, they raised up that stretcher and put the woman at the back of the hall there. 
because they were afraid. If you move that a little, she could, you know, just pass on. She was that near the gate of death. And I didn't know she was there. And then uh, I preached that night on the love of God and the mercy and the grace of God. And I said, if you are going to give your life to the Lord, raise up your hand. And, uh, you know, people raised up their hands and then we prayed. And I, then I said, the Lord is going to heal you now. That woman did not have another person to look to that did another person is as serious as mine, whose case is as terrible as mine. No, she was all by herself and she said in her testimony she had never entered any church building in her life she was coming from korea and her religion wasn't even christianity and then i prayed i said name of jesus be healed and get up now and the power of god struck her there nobody even went there she felt the inner strength and the inner power she rose up I said she rose up. I said she rose up. Some people clap as if they, they have crock crow in their hands. And then when she rose up, she walked. I was wondering what was happening. And she walked to the front. She was crying, tears of joy. And then she said, Pastor, I have a question. I thought it was going to be a great question. You know, when people are coming from that kind of, the, that side of the world, and they say they have a question, you say, oh God, help me that I'm able to answer her question. Maybe he wants to ask a question on science, on religion, or whatever. I said, what's your question? He said, today is the first time I'm hearing the name of Jesus and now I was about to die and I got up, now I'm healed, now I'm strong. He said, my question is, why did God heal somebody like me? Oh, I said, that's your question, that one is simple. Because God has miracles of mercy. That even though you've never been in church, you've never read the Bible, but the miracle of mercy has come upon you today, enjoy your health. And that woman was so happy. A time of refreshing had come for her. A time of refreshing has come for you. Power to heal, power to deliver, and power to set free. Tonight is your night. My point is, she didn't wait for anybody. She got it by herself. She had not heard or seen any other person giving testimony before, but she got it by herself. You'll get it by yourself. Now we have a church in Moscow, Russia. At that time, when I was invited there, we had no church, no member, no believer in Russia. And then we didn't use a church building, we used a parliamentary building. And that building is where they have been gathering people together for 70 years and they have been telling people no god no god no god and then the people of russia the pentecostal union of russia they invited me and we went there and it was a parliamentary building we used i didn't hear the language and most of them did not understand the english i was speaking by an interpreter and then uh, somebody who had been taught atheism and had been told no God, no power, no miracle, he said, I was sure there that they are telling lies to these people. No miracle, no power. And so what he did, he went to look for somebody who had been paralyzed for 25 years. Hands paralyzed, feet paralyzed, helpless, impotent, and could not make any move at all. And then put that woman at the door. That 
and it, it's just that one door there. Everybody going out, out of the meeting that day will see the paralyzed woman there. And then they'll be warning, but they say, God is a God of miracles, a God of power, and the Prince of power, and the Prince of peace. Why is this one there? We mention the name of Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus.